nutrient required may change due to temperature or season. It may also change due to type of use or yung activities na ginagawa ng horse. And it also may change due to age. So, meron din tayong feeding plan. So, it may be rapid source. Ito yung mga found in hay or grasses. Tapos, high in fiber siya, pero mababa naman siya sa total digestible nutrients. Next naman is yung concentrate feed. Ito naman yung mixture ng grains, ng cereals, ng minerals. Uh, low in fiber to, tapos nagko-contain siya ng relatively high levels of protein and other nutrients. Tapos meron din tayong trace mineral salt block. Uh, Nagpaprovide naman to ng some of the most essential uh, horse vitamins. Yung salt or yung sodium, ito yung major electrolyte provided ng trace mineral block. Tumutulong to sa pag-regulate ng body fluids ng horse na nalolos nila while sweating. Yan. So, next slide po. Next slide. So, next slide po. Yan. So, dito naman po tayo sa second uh, basic requirement ng horse. So, andito yung water. So, kailangan natin nang mag-provide ng water all the time sa horses. At yung average consumption po nila ay 10 to 12 gallons per day. So, ang majority of drinking nila is done at feeding time. So, sinabi dito na snow does not substitute for water. Kasi po, if yung snow yung magiging water source ng horse, pwedeng ma-reduce yung water intake nila. Na pwedeng mag-lead sa greater incidence ng infection and colic. Ito yung ano, any abdominal pain, yung colic yun. So, kailangan natin i-provide yung horses ng sufficient water kahit na ano pang season yun. So, kailangan din nila ng clean water buckets. So, kailangan natin i-make sure na yung water buckets nila is clean, free from dirt, um, old hay and algae. Tapos, it is also good to give them warm water during winter. So, um, pan facts lang po about sa horse. Uh, kay, kay, kaya nilang mabuhay for almost a month without food. Pero within a mere of 48 hours po, magpapakita na siya ng signs ng colic at makaka-quickly develop ng infection. Tapos yung horse can only survive about 5 days lang po without water. So, next slide naman po. Yan. So, dito naman po tayo sa pangatlong basic requirements, which is yung shelter. So, yung horses house outdoors. So, ito po yung mga adequate space. So, for outdoor pen, it is 12 feet by 12 feet. Yung pasture turnout po, ito yung nagpaprovide sa horses ng access sa important nutrients. Allows for exercises and supports their natural eating behavior as a grazing animal. So, yung pasture turnout po, it is 0.1 acre per horse. Tapos, yung paddock naman po, ano to, enclosure kung saan horses are kept. Uh, ang size naman niya is 500 square feet per horse. So, sa horses house outdoors, kailangan din na yung outdoor facilities should have good drainage, uh, waste management, water drops, And yung siyempre, yung number one na iniisip natin is yung safety ng horses. Yung next slide po. Uh, yung sa fencing naman po. So yung kailangan natin i-consider muna sa paggawa or pag decision kung anong fence yung gagamitin. Siyempre kailangan sturdy and stable siya. Next is kailangan din... It is safe for our horses. Tapos, uh, ayan po, safe. Ayan, safety. So, we should consider if the fence we're building is safe for our horses. Kasi yung number one dapat na iniisip natin is yung welfare ng animals natin. So, pwedeng uh, pumasok dito yung freedom from discomfort by providing appropriate environment. Tapos, siyempre, 
uh, it also varies in their height. So, yung pens na pag didesisyonan natin, dapat nakabase din siya sa height ng horse natin. And, syempre, we should also look for that. So, uh, yung hindi gaanong expensive, but at the same time, low maintenance na pens. So, eto po yung mga types of pens. So, nandiyan yung electric pens. Uh, ito yung electrify, electrified pens na deliver siya ng mild shock to, our, to a horse when it leans on the fence or runs into the barrier. Makakatulong po siya na matrain yung horse na i-avoid yung pens. So these pens are usually constructed ng coated wire and may be able to be adjusted to different current levels. But they are, ito yung isa sa most expensive pens type. And less visible siya sa horse. Kaya minsan, pwede silang maris dito yung true impacts and tangling. Next naman po, yung wire fences. Uh, simple lang po siya, strong wire fences. Wala naman siyang electrical current. Uh, madali siyang i-install and isa to sa mga least expensive fences. Pero, uh, high yung risk na yung horses is Magi, uh, matatanggal sila sa wires kasi nga hindi uh, wala silang hindi siya nagde-deliver ng mild shock sa horse na pwedeng maging training para ma-avoid nila yung pens. Next naman po yung mesh fences. Ito naman po yung much more durable fence than simple strong wire cons constructions. Uh, yung diamond sheep mesh yun yung best na type ng mesh fences. Uh, effective siya. Uh, ito din yung ano, durable fences. Uh, more visible din siya sa horses kesa dun sa individual wires. Tapos next naman po is yung pipe fences. Uh, sturdy siya and relatively visible. So, and while they require less maintenance, they also less flexible and cannot easily be adjusted if the fence needs to be reconfigured. So, these fences uh, can be dangerous for very unruly horses. However, because of the bite, will not flex at all with impacts and a horse can be more easily injured. So, mas madali, uh, yun nga po siya, visible siya, pero mas madaling, pag tumama yung horse natin dito, mas pwede silang magkaroon ng risk na ma-injured. Tapos, next naman po is yung wood rail fences. Uh, these rustic fences are one of the most popular choices because they are highly visible, easy to install, and initially may be less expensive. But they do require more maintenance kasi nga po yung wood, syempre pwede siyang mas masira agad, lalo na kapag nauulanan. Tapos next naman po is yung vinyl rail fences. Uh, ito yung vinyl rails mimic the country look of wood rails but are very low, main, low maintenance po siya compared dun sa wood rail fences. And meron siyang much longer lifespan. Uh, they are also more expensive, however, and can be more difficult to repair if they are broken. So these, I, these are highly visible fences. Na suitable po siya sa wide range ng uses and can work for many horses. So, next slide po. Next slide. Next po. So, dun pa rin po tayo sa shelter. So, yung shelter po siya is protection from environment. So, shelter serves as their protection sa cold, sa rain, sa wind, and sa sun. So, andyan din po yung windbreak. Ay, effective po to sa pagpaprovide ng temporary relief from wind and blowing snow. So, yung open front shed naman po. Uh, yung usually size niya is 100 square feet per horse. So, importante po yung location nito. Tapos, yung open side face away from prevailing wind. Dapat yung open na side po niya is away dun sa prevailing wind. Tapos, yan, width versus depth din po. Next po. Okay. 
Yan. So, yung stall housing naman po, syempre kailangan well-ventilated po siya. As makikita po natin dyan sa image na it is well-ventilated, kailangan din po mag-provide tayo ng adequate lighting. Uh, syempre kailangan din it is safe from four-hour horses and kailangan mag-provide tayo ng watering device. So, kailangan natin mag-provide ng clean water buckets kasi nga kailangan ng horses yung water most of the time. Tapos, syempre, meron din dapat tayong feeding area. So, next po. So, eto naman po yung size requirements. For a minimum size, it is 10 feet by 10 feet po. Tapos, uh, ang preferred size is 12 feet by 12 feet. Ang stallion stall is 14 feet by 14 feet. At yung fouling stallion po is 16 feet by 16 feet. So, yan po yung mga size requirements ng iba-ibang sizes ng stall, ay ng stall housing. Next po. So, eto naman po yung bedding. Ay, yung bedding, pinoprotektahan niya yung feet and legs ng horses natin. At the same time, it absorbs moisture from waste. So, ito yung, mga, ito yung required sa bedding. So, kailangan consider natin na dust-free siya, absorbent, readily available, easy to dispose, and it is also should be affordable din po siya. So, yung next slide po. So, ito naman po yung some types of bedding. So, nandyan po yung straw. Ito uh, po, yung pros niya. Widely available po siya and aesthetically pleasing. Yung cons naman po niya uh, can be prone to mold if harvested or stored improperly. Tapos, uh, pedi, uh, horses may try to eat it and it is not very absorbent din po. Tapos, yun naman po sa wood shavings. Yung pros niya, widely available siya. Tapos, mas absorbent siya kaysa dun sa straw. Tapos, yung cons naman po niya, uh, can be dusty. Yung certain types ng wood na ginagamit, uh, pwede siyang mag ng allergic reactions. Tapos, yung price po niya can vary depending sa local economic conditions. Next po. So, yan po. Waste management. So, whether... Kung meron man tayong 1, 2, 50, or 100 ng horses, yung proper waste management, essential po siya. Hindi lang para uh, to keep yung neighbors natin happy, kailangan din uh, ng waste ma uh, proper waste management uh, para sa yung horses natin is healthy. At kailangan din para mamit natin yung zoning restrictions at yung health regulations. So, yung effective waste management program includes yung collection, yung storage, uh, kung temporary man to or long term, tapos yung disposal or yung usage. Tapos, uh, yung horse po, uh, it produces approximately 37 pounds of pesos per day, 2.4 gallons ng urine per day, per, per day. Tapos, yung soil bedding po na remove with manure while cleaning the stall, varies depending sa management practices but usually amounts of 70 pounds of waste per day so kung sa suma total po yung annual waste ng isang horse kaya niyang i-fill yung 12 by 12 stall na about 6 feet deep so ganun po kadami yung Tapos, next naman po is yung making manure management a more thoughtful and efficient chore benefits both the horse owner and their neighbors. Yung time spent planning for proper and easy manure disposal will pay back in many more hours spent enjoying the horses through decreased time and effort in stall cleaning and manure disposal chores. So, in conclusion po, yung waste management essential siya kasi makakatulong to sa mental para ma-maintain natin yung good neighbor relations, supply and other minimization, and yung ma-ensure yung compatibility ng horse tables within the neighborhood. Yan po. Next po.
So, number four na po tayo dun sa basic requirements ng horse. So, nandito po yung healthcare. So, kailangan alam natin kung ano ba yung normal dun sa alaga natin. Siyempre, kailangan mag-provide din tayo ng regular vaccinations. So, nakadepende po siya, yung vaccination nakadepende po siya sa geographical locations, sa type ng use o activity done by a horse, tapos dun din po sa edad nila. Tapos, kailangan din ng regular deworming. So, meron po tayo rotational program. Tapos, kailangan din na aware tayo sa parasite life cycles. Tapos, kailangan din natin i-provide yung dental exam. So, annually po ito. Tapos, syempre, kailangan may first aid kit. And, alam na, uh, know your veterinarian's phone number. And, quarantine stall. Yung quarantine stall po, para po siya sa mga new or sick horses, dun po siya nilalagay para po hindi po siya makahawa ng ibang horses. Next naman po. Yan, so nasa pang fifth naman po tayo na basic requirements of a horse. So andyan po yung hoof care. So many foot problems can occur in horses. So to reduce hoof problems, kailangan ng schedule regular training or chewing. So, gano nga po ba kadalas kailangan uh, yung feet ng horse ay tinitrim? So, yung trim or yung shoe hooves po, uh, at least uh, every 6 to 8 weeks po siya sa tu tuwing summer. Pero dahil po yung horse hooves po, uh, nag-grow po siya slower sa winter. So, yung pagtitrim po sa kanya is every 6 to 12 weeks po. So, Yun naman pong kailangan din natin mag-maintain ng good hoof balance kasi po, horses with good hooves move better tapos less stress and strain on bones, tendons, and ligaments po. Tapos, kailangan din natin mag-provide ng appropriate chewing for different weather and footing conditions at mag-provide ng appropriate treatment when disease occurs and maintain proper horse nutrition. So yun lang po, take note lang po dun sa ano, yung pagtitrim na pag summer 6 to 8 weeks. Tapos po pag winter naman 6 to 12 weeks po. Yeah, next po. So eto na po yung sa last dun sa basic requirements of a horse. Eto po yung exercise. So horses need a daily exercise to stay healthy and happy. As a horse owner, you will need to ensure your horse has regular exercise sessions to maintain a healthy weight. So to exercise your horse, start by warming up the horse with a walk or trot. Then do riding and non-riding exercises with your horse to build its stamina. End every exercise session by cooling down your horse so it's not at risk of injury. So katulad din po ng mga tao, kailangan din ng... As a grazing animal nga po, kailangan ng horse ng exercise. So, kailangan, syempre, una, um, warm up muna, tapos dun po gagawin yung riding o non-riding exercises. Tapos, kung sa end ng every exercise, kailangan muna po natin i-cool down yung horse para po ma-prevent yung risk of injury. Yun lang po yung sa equine management.
Good morning po. Pada lang po tayo dito tayo. Eh? Angel. Oo, sorry yan. <laughs> Idagdag ninyo yung ano, yung rinisan ng kanina, yung sa video clip ni Angel. Is description. Sa galop, ganun. Tapos, idagdag ninyo. Uh, so, yung video presentation po kanina is yun yung po yung mga different types of ga gates or paces uh, ng course po. So, yung, yung gate nila, idagdag din ninyo. Ano naman siguro nakalagay yun naman siguro sa ano nyo? Uh, or, po, sa bandang last po, Doc. Okay, sige. Thank you. Equine terminology. <coughs> Italian, ito yung male horse over four years of age that has not been gilded. Yung male naman is adult male, female horse or misa dyan sa mga nilang pili, pili, gelding, neutered male horse, also act of neutering <coughs> a horse, is that male horse used for breeding. Good mare, female, <coughs> female to bread that is used for breeding, yearling, young horse of either sex that is one or two years old, or young male horse under four years old, filly, female horse under the age of <coughs> three, yearling, young horse, of either sex and is between one or two years old. Fowl, young horse of either sex and is less than one year of age. Fowling, the act of giving birth or pasturation. Fowl yung ano nyan, pronunciation nya. Fowl. Fowl. Fowling. <coughs> Next. Sa horse maturation naman, <clears throat> mare, sexually maturity of 12 to 15 months of age, but some reach puberty as early as 9 to 10 months, and other, others as late as 18 months. 10 to 24 months yung onset of sexual maturity ng mare. Yung mare is pwede nang i- Pwede yung bread as early as 2 years of age kung yung mare is healthy or on a good plan of nutrition. Pero sinasuggest ng mga breeders na maghintay until 3 years of age yung mare. Yung mare can, a mare can produce one fowl per year. And mares can continue to produce falls well into their late teens or early to mid 20s. A stallion. Most stallions <coughs> begin to produce sperm as early as 12 to 14 months. Most are at least 15 months or older before they can successfully breed. Kaya yung mga farmers, um, Sineseparate nila yung mga young stallions before sila maging sexual, ma sexual matured para maiwasan yung unwanted pregnancies. Next. Estro cycle and gestation period. Estro cycle in the mare is 21 to 
22 days long as defined by the intervals between ovulation. Yung estrus, tumatagal siya ng 5 to 7 days. Yung estrus is, ito yung in heat ng mare. It is the follicular phase as the overt signs of estrus are attributable to the estrogen production by the follicle or the ovary. Yung sign niya is, the mare will show interest in the stallion and may actually seek out a stallion when she's in estrus. The mare will move her ears forward, elevate her tail, squat to your knee, in term niya is breaking down, avert the clitoris, term is winking, and accept the stallion for bidding. Yung lifespan ng sperm, sa sperm ng horse, sa female tract ng horse is 2 to 4 days. Tapos, yung survival time with fertilizing capacity naman is 1 to 2 days. The ovulation is often said to occur on about day 5 of cycle or 1 to 2 days before end of estrus. In the estrus naman, ito na yung hindi na hindi na inhit yung mayor or the UTL phase since it is dominated by progesterone produced by the corpus luteum. And the S is tumatagal ng 14 to 15 days. In a sense niya is, during the S2, the mare rejects the stallion's advances. She does this by spinning her ears back and kicking the stallion. When counting days in mare cycle, it is best to start counting the day the mare goes out of heat and count forward 14 to 15 days to predict when she will next come into heat. In this way, you can um, anticipate when the next heat will be better than, than counting the traditional 21 days. Yung gestation period naman ng horse is typically between 30, 330 and 345 days or 11 months. In natural <coughs> environment, the stallion will breed the mare in the summer and fowls will be born the next year in spring and early summer. This ensures that the fowls are born when pasture is abundant and the weather is mild. Mares are considered seasonally polyesterous. Yung seasonally polyesterous means they go into heat and are receptive to a stallion at regular period during the spring and summer lang. Pero, may mga breeders na minamanipulate rin yung breeding cycle ng isang ng horse. Um, they use artificial daylight to stimulate the mare's brain to produce the reproductive hormones needed to induce estrus. This allows mares to be bred earlier and in turn have a fall earlier the following year. Nangyayari ito commonly sa racehorse industry. Next. Sa breeding methods naman is pasture breeding. Yung pasture breeding is the most natural form as it consists of turning I stallion out in a field with the mares you'd like him to impregnate. However, it's rare that high value stallions are used for breeding in this manner as the risk of injury increases considerably. Mares who aren't interested in breeding can severely, severely injure a stallion. Yung pasture breeding, ito yung uncontrolled breeding or the natural way of breeding. Yung mga mares and 
Stallion. Pinapakawala na sila sa my field. <coughs> Tapos yun na mayayari yung natural way of breeding nila yung magmamate. Pero before mm, may mga breeders na be, before nila pakawalan sa my field yung mga mares, tinitis muna nila yung mga mares sa stallion before sila pakawalan. Sa hand breeding naman, is forced as facilitated natural cover. The term for the natural way of way horses have always bred. However, the hands involved belong to the people controlling the mare and stallion. At many stud, at many stud farms, hand breeding takes place in a special breeding shed. When an experienced stallion is brought to the shed, he knows what he's supposed to do. <clears throat> yung hand breeding na involved na dito yung selection of, selection of course, which is yung stud. Bago sila pumunta sa my breeding shed or sa breeding stall, pun- pinupunta mo na yung mga yung mares and yung stallion sa my teasing stall. If or to confirm if the mare is in heat. Tapos kung na-confirm nila na in heat na yung mare, tinadala na nila sa my breeding stall. Tapos inaalalayan ng mga breeders yung stallion and yung mare pag nangyari na yung mating ano nila. Sa artificial insemination naman, the use of embryo transfer from valuable mares into surrogate mares is gaining around a gaining ground. This allows breeders to keep a mare in competition or save her from any pregnancy complications. For AI to be successful, you must work with your veterinarian to coordinate the insemination with fresh or frozen salmon with within 24 hours of the mare's ovulation. The yung artificial insemination ginagamit na uh, alas parang halos ginagamit na ito. Ginagamit ito ngayon kasi mas mas madali para maiwasan din yung mga complications and injuries. Kung may san kasi may Tina-travel pa yung mayor o kaya yung stud para sa para mag para sa bidding. Yun, tapos may possibility na may complication na mangyari kaya mas ginagamit na nila yung artificial insemination para iwas sa complication. Next na po. Hello, hello classmates. So, next naman tayo sa common disease and treatment. So, strangles is a highly contagious disease of a respiratory tract infection caused by the bacteria Streptococcus equi or S. equi. It's a microorganism which under the microscope, uh, ang, ang appearance niya sa microscope is a, a string beads. At, and it is the primarily cause, cause and it is produced a clinical disease in in horse, donkeys, and mo- mules. And at wala siyang pinipili na ka- kasarian and, and ages or breed. It is transmitted by the direct or inhalation contact with influence disease. 
The bacteria is often infect the lymph nodes around the jaw, causing them to swollen in 48 hours in severe cases, and they become too swollen that horses struggle to breathe properly. The, the signs of struggles. Uh, the quarantine period is 3 to 14 days, and the first sign in infection is fever. Within 24 and 48 hours of the initial fever, uh, mag, so, mag, mag so show na ng sign yung horse ng ano, uh, strangles symptoms. At ang uh, at ang streptococcus, ang common cause niya ay ang brain. Punta naman siya sa bastard strangles or mistat, mistatic, mis, metastic strangle. Characterized by obsession or surrounded by inflamed tissues in the abdomen including the kidney, and spleen, liver, mesentery, lung and brain. Lungs and brain. Purpura hem, hemorrhagic Hemorrhagica is a rare symptom of struggles showing a sign of bleeding from the capillaries and fluid and fluid accumulation or, or, or edema and around the limbs and head. The range of these severe symptoms uh, from mild to, to death. The treatment for struggle, struggles, they must... Uh, they must uh, they must have a supportive care from the owners for the owners who are in uh, for the horse who are infected and the owner must protect the themselves from the animals has in infection to avoid the nasal discharge from the horse on their eyes and nose and mouth feeding wet or such feeding to make easier to swallow and drain the abscesses. Uh, hot packing or hot compress mas na, na nakakatulong to sa treatment nila para ma ma break down din yung abscess. Yung if the abscession were ruptured, this should be uh, it should be flushed daily using a povidine iodine solution. Anti-inflammatory or antibiotic, uh, depending on the degree of the fever or and severity of the symptoms, they must uh, usually yung ina-apply na ano antibiotic is yung penicillin. Next. West Nile virus. Uh, this is an it is caused by West Nile encephalomyelitis. It is an inflammation in brain or in spinal cord. It is discovered in on 1937 in West Nile district on, of Uganda in Africa, and it was first identified in the United States on in 1999. The viral disease was transmitted by the mosquito, and the Ang, and the ho and the host of this disease is the wild bird. West Nile virus mosquito ha, who have fed uninfected birds can transport or transmit the virus by biting a horse or a human. In humans, uh, uh, he, na tra transmit ng disease na to by biting. Na, at nag, na, na, pip, na hindi naman nagde-develop yung disease na to sa humans kasi dahil na rin sa, sa, sa immune system. Depende na sa immune system ng tao. Pero may, uh, may chance pa rin na mag-develop to sa mga bata at saka sa matatanda at saka sa mga uh, weak na immune na weak na immune system. So, yung signs nila, kung yung horse ay hindi na, ano, nabakunahan, 
mag mag show sila ng sign signs ng 5 to 5 five to 15 days but uh, ma pero yung mga ibang kaba uh, horse horse hindi hindi sila nag show, show ng sign kaya maga sila namamatay at yung uh, pero kapag pero kapag yung ano nag pero nag pag nagdevelop yung yung disease sa horse ma yung unang ano symptoms yung loss of coordination depression heightened sensitivity to external stimuli stumbling toe dragging and paralysis para ano para masabi, ma-confirm kung may yung horse uh, may West Nile virus, kailangan nilang ma magpa-blood test sa treatment naman. There's uh, walang specific na treatment sa sa may uh, sa may sakit na West sa may sakit na sa, na kabayo sa West na infected sa West Nile virus. Pero yung binibigay nilang mad madalas yung non-steroidal drugs and corticosteroid. Uh, yung parent quarantine for the horses is not advisable because they are not the carrier of the disease. And supportive care. The, uh, so supportive care and good at environment. Dapat... Uh, mag-apply din yung mga ay apply. dapat yung mga owners uh, i-therapy nila yung mga kabayo nila para mas madali silang ma-recover at every year may uh, every year binabakunahan yung mga kabayo para sa anti-West Nile virus next next po Equine viral arteritis, arteritis, AVA. It is a contagious disease caused by equine, equine arteritis virus. This disease was identified in 1953 on a horse farm at Ohio. Caused by RT, RT virus called equine arteritis virus are small and en small enveloped animal viruses with an ecosahedral core containing a positive sense RNA genome. The transmission of this virus in, the, uh, in different ways, such as respiratory secretions, the uh, virus shed in the cement of an, effect, an, in, of an infect, infected stallion is transmitted to mare when they are breed and virus passes across the placenta from infected mare to unborn foal stylion a foal and stylion might be the carrier of this disease so uh, ang ang carrier ng itong disease na to yung stylion hanggang may pasa niya sa sa buong ano ng kabayo and then yung signs nila Ayong signs. Most of the horse exposed to the virus will develop no sign of disease. However, if the illness occur, develop within three to fourteen, being a sign of fever, depression, anorexia, leukopenia, dependent edema, respiratory signs. Uh, such as nasal or ocular discharge, skin uh, con conjunctivitis or pink eye, skin rash, abortion in in the pregnant mare, in interstate yal pa pneumonia para sa mga fall na hindi pa ay sa mga fall na illness and death in young falls and infection. In, in the style yun. Sa 
treatment naman nila. Uh, there is no specific ant uh, antiviral treatment for this disease. The non-steroidal and fla anti inflammatories are recommended in severe clinical cases of AVA to reduce the severity of illness and especially to style yun, to minimize the temporary loss of fertility that can be last for up to four months. Majority of an adult horses will develop uh, will develop uh, that develop EVA will experience an an eventful recovery with no adverse side effect with even without the intervention any symptomatic treatment. Uh, there is no effective treatment for fowls with pneumonia. And for the care, uh, for the stallion, the carrier of this disease, uh, um, should be performed a castration. Next box. Ringworm or derm dermatophytes. This is a fungal infection which can be caused by several organisms, usually members of the Dicophyton or Microsporum families. Uh, this uh, con uh, contagious skin disease caused by the growth or fungi or fun, fungi which live either upon the surface of the skin or in the hairs of of the effect of the areas are affect, are affected most do, domesticated animals are affected of this ringworm appearance the common one are on common one on are on their face, neck, or shoulders, chest, or any part of the body. Their skin, their skin beca becomes uh, rice and scarfy and grayish white crust are formed. Yung at nag-form siya ng gray scale or yellow scale na na mag mag did it mag did it touch na yung sa sa skin ng horse sa treatment naman nila at the fungi all only survive four months in the environment oh, in the environment uh, usually kasi nakukuha uh, na na ano sila sa sa fence or sa or sa trench fences and they can be carried on skin for up to three weeks before signs of infection are obvious uh, clip they must clip the hair around the wound and can apply the povidon iodine teabendozole ointment so so far deep meconazole ketoconazole flu fluconazole and ex, and, ex, and plus exposure to to sunshine para uh mamatay yung at uh, yung fungi na ito next Can canker is a chronic hypo hypertrophy and apparent suppuration of the corn producing tissues of the foot involving the frog and the sole of the horse uh Can canker grows from the absence of the oxygen in the outer tissues which produce the horn. The most commonly isolated agents are Fesobacterium and, and more on bacterial dye species. The, this, the cause of this disease was unknown, but most horses were in, affected by this uh, But by canker have a history of wet areas. 
the the, up, the appearance Froghorn loosens to reveal foul smelling ne necrotic tissue, thick and cream colored, bleeds easily and 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 is very subs susceptible to screw worm worm maggots. The uh, screw worm maggots uh, is a parasitic fly allowing the larvae to dig on the slice through tissues. So, um, in their treatment naman, uh, superficial debridement or loose horn and affected tissue should be removed. And that, and topical antimicrobial agents such as metronidazole. Next. Next po. Trash. Uh, this is a gener degenerative condition of the frog involving the central and lateral sulci. The central sul sulcus is the more commonly involved if the horse has sheared heels, and the lateral sulci are primarily involved if the uh, involved in most uh, cases of trash without sheared heels. The appearance of this, uh, of the appearance, moy, uh, nagmumay siya, black discharge, od other characteristics, and the borders of the frog called necrotic. And sa treatment naman nila. Clean the affected area of the frog and treat with an antiseptic and regular exercise in a dry area. Next slide po. So, uh, hi, I'm Miss Catherine Sowen Tomas, um, and I'm gonna discuss the horse vaccines. Vaccination by a licensed veterinarian may be required by state law for rabies vaccine to be considered valid. The majority of the states requires rabies to be administered by or under the supervision of a licensed veterinarian. So, hindi sino-sino mong tao lang yung pwede mag-inject or mag patik ng mga anti-rabies vaccines kasi dapat yung mga veterinarians lang kasi sila yung may sapat na knowledge and mga uh, alam nila yung mga pasikot-sikot ganun and uh, unvaccinated adult horses administer a single dose and re-vaccinate annually so eto isang beses isang dose lang tapos revaccinate re annually once a year vaccinated adult horses yun yung kasi na vaccinate na siya kaya every year na lang siya magbabaccinate pregnant mares currently no vaccine is labeled for use in pregnant mares mares may be vaccinated before breeding for or 4 to 6 weeks before foaling so dito wala wala pa daw mga vaccine for the pregnant mares para sa mga anti rabies and next one is the foals and windlings of unvaccinated mares. Admi administer one dose at four to six months of age. Refer to, refer to manufacturer label guidelines. Annual revaccination is recommended. Next slide. Uh, rabies. This is a well-known cause of fatal disease in main, many mammals. The virus is transmitted through bite wounds by affected animals such as foxes, skunks, raccoons, and bats. Though other mammals may be transmit the virus like horses and dogs and cats. So yung na-search namin na uh, ginagamit for anti-rabies vaccine is the Ravac 3. Ravac virus vaccine for the vaccination of healthy horses for the prevention of disease due to rabies. The, this vaccine miss, meets the one-year duration of immunity for horses. So yung killed vaccine, yun yung nagko-consist siya ng dead but, but antigenically active viruses or, or bacteria which evokes production of protective antibodies without causing diseases. 
uh, yung dosage niya is inject 1, 2 ml dose in intramuscularly. So, i-inject siya sa muscles at 3 months of, of age or older. Note, 2 ml vials must be used. So, yung vials is yung mga small containers, typically cylinder and made of glass. And they're vaccinate one year later and annually thereafter. Next slide po. Tetanus. Tetanus. Tetanus or lockjaw is an often fatal disease caused by anaerobic bacteria. Grows in low oxygen conditions. Clostridium tetani. This or yun yung parang another name, another called for tetanus. The spores of CL tetani are commonly present in the soil and can contaminate puncture wounds, crushing wounds, open lacerations, surgical incisions, and umbilicae of folds. Upon gaining entrance to the body, they produce a powerful neurotoxin that blocks neurotransmission, resulting in an opposed muscle contraction and spam. So yung uh, mga tetanus vaccine, Uh, yun yung tetanus antitoxin for equine. Pero hindi na ata ito ginagamit kasi may mga risk of hypersensitivity and serum sickness. Kaya parang nireplace siya ng mga human tetanus immune, immunoglobin. Tapos, yung dosage niya is 1,5 IU in 1 ml ampoule for IM injection. So yung uh, IM is yun yung intra- Uh, muscular injection. Tsaka doon, hindi daw pwede yung IV root or i-inject sa mga vein or veins. Next slide po. Influenza. Influenza. One of the most common respiratory diseases in horses. Eventually in highly contagious. The virus can be transmitted by aerosol transmission from horse to horse. Tim symptoms are similar to those in human with, co with a cold, including dry cough, na nasal discharge, fever, and loss of appetite. Horses that travel or are exposed to other horses are most at risk. Uh, there are two types of equine influenza virus vaccine currently marketed. First is the inactivated killed vaccines for intramuscular administration. So yung inactivated vaccine, yun yung vaccine na nagko-consist ng mga virus particles, bacteria, or other pathogens that have been grown in culture and then 